Well, the last two years have shown us uh, all over the world, and especially in medicine, that it's sometimes important to act uh, quickly and still use the best evidence when making decisions. I assume that the question on how to treat patients suffering from COVID-19 in the most promising way has popped up in every hospital and clinic. And particularly in view of the information overload, the need for reliable information was enormous. Uh, and many projects to channel and focus information that are relevant for poli policymakers and clinicians gained popularity. At that point, an idea in the guideline committee that had long haunted the former chairman of the guideline committee, Ara Shafshari, was gaining momentum. It was the aim to provide rapid clinical guidance without leaving the best available evidence aside. This idea, which actually is an established concept at different professional societies and also journals, formed the basis of this new introduced focused guidelines within ISARIC guideline portfolio um, that has been developed mainly by Arash Afshari and Carolina Romera and is published in the EGA. Until now, the process comprising the initiation, development and publication of a set of clinical guidelines could take up to two years. Clearly, uh, such a strategy cannot be uh, applied in health crisis and emergent situations with new challenges that need to be addressed in a quicker manner. Uh, thus, we expanded the traditional guideline format and now we have three distinct formats to provide evidence-based recommendation. First, the extended or traditional guidelines. That's what we already had for a long time within ISAIC. Second, a focused guideline or clinical guideline on a narrower topic. Focused guidelines require less time from the initial idea to publication. However, they adhere to the same methodological structure as traditional guidelines. With an expedited systematic review process. And third, and lastly, rapid statements or kind of expert recommendations. And these are equivalent to expert opinions that aim to provide a unified response to health crises and emergencies. To be honest, there were some misunderstandings regarding the new terminology. Although these new procedures were developed in parallel with established methodology, the new paradigm in developing clinical guidelines still provoked some concerns, even regarding the name of this new concept. Last but not least, the new nomenclature led to the misunderstanding that focused guidelines were restricted guidelines of inferior quality and might be viewed as a kind of second class guidelines. But this is definitely not the case. Focused guidelines should be not inferior with regard to methodological rigor. And my personal view is that with a more focused question, it is even more feasible to produce a reliable synthesis of evidence, assess the risk of bias and adhere to current state of the art guideline methodology than if the topic is too broad. Obviously, it's uh, sometimes difficult to create a new format from the scratch. And therefore, our task is now to adapt the created rules according to the experiences we gain with the first examples of this new format. And we already have a few ideas that are currently framed 
and developed as focused guidelines. For example, a focused guideline on the use of myocardial biomarkers in the period of medicine. A second issue is related to the response of the ESIC members. Such a format only makes sense if members perceive a value in this new format and even more important for the beginning, healthcare professionals within our active society must take a lead in creating focused guidelines uh, once there is a need for it. And it's, although it's a shorter, more restricted format, it needs time and commitment. And this was especially challenging during the pandemic when most anesthesiologists worked at the front line of tackling the healthcare burden associated with COVID-19. And finally, the ultimate goal will be to adopt the concept of a living guideline approach. And this concept includes recommendations that are constantly updated. And with these visions in mind, we believe that we will respond more adequately to the need of physicians and patients alike.